Let us prepare our hearts for worship during the prelude. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm Roxanne Wasson. I'm a member here at Redeemer, and I am really happy to be leading worship today on Mother's Day. We have moved to step three in worship, singing without masks, live music, no physical distancing, and sharing the peace, however you are comfortable doing. 
Welcome to worship today. Whether you are with us in person or watching online on another day or time, we gather together to praise God, our risen Lord, and celebrate the gifts that we have received for God's glory. On this day, when we celebrate our earthly mothers and all those who show a mother's love and care, we pray for those who are mourning, <coughs> mourning their mothers and those who have never known their mothers, those who are estranged from their mothers, and we think of those who desire children and struggle with infertility, those who have children and struggle to care for them. We pray for all the fathers, grandparents, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles who fill a motherly role. In God's family, we are all family to one another, looking not to our own interest, but to the interest of others. We give thanks for foster parents who provide love and shelter to those who come through their homes. God of all, we are thankful for all those who provide loving care to us all in all stages of our lives. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Our first hymn is number 686, We Give Thee But Thine Own, verses 1 through 4. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's pray together the prayer of the day. Faithful Lord, you have seen your servants through every trial. Stir up even today the power of your gospel to transform, renew, and lead new believers to your community. By the power of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Open your word for us, O God. Make us free to hear and not hold back so that we may live in the joy of Christ Jesus, crucified and risen, who calls us by name. Our reading today is Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 34. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs 
that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them slip, stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped, but Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all that were in his house. And at the same hour that night, he took them, washed their wounds, and he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up to the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become believe, a believer in God. Word of God. Way of life. I was reading this scripture, planning prayers and hymns to go along with it, when I realized that it was not just the scripture of Mother's Day, but a scripture full of acts of mothering. Including in this scripture is ministering, encouragement, comfort, compassion, and empathy. I read the whole chapter. The verses before and after the reading found people with open hearts, trying to do their best in their lives to follow where God leads them. Before our reading of the day begins, Paul was called in a vision to go to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony. In Philippi, Paul, Silas, and their companion Luke found a place of prayer outside the city on the banks of a river. There they met Lydia, a woman who dealt in purple cloth. Lydia was a worshiper of God she had gathered with other worshipers on the Sabbath at the river since there was no synagogue. Lydia had been seeking God, and God had opened her heart to hear the word from Paul. She learned about Jesus there, and she and her whole household were baptized. Lydia opened her home to the men, and she would not take no for an answer, possibly hoping for more instruction, open conversation, and prayer, and a blessing on her house. For many days, Paul and Silas and Luke went openly about the city to the place of prayer, preaching and teaching about Jesus. They were noticed by a slave girl who was possessed by a spirit of divination. She made a lot of money for her masters by telling the future. This slave girl followed Paul and Silas around for many days, shouting, these men are, gods of, are slaves of the Most High God who proclaims to you a way of salvation. Feeling annoyed by all this attention, Paul finally ordered the spirit to leave her in the name of Jesus. It left her and she lost the ability to tell the future, thereby causing the loss of income for her masters. Her masters didn't care that she was delivered from an evil spirit or that Paul was offering a way to salvation. They were only angry that they had lost their earnings. This girl's not mentioned again and I wonder if she had a mother to turn to, or even a home, if she was just left on the street. The masters went into the marketplace to accuse Paul and Silas of advocating customs that are not lawful for Romans to adopt or observe. In the marketplace, the crowd got in on the act, attacking them. They went to the justice of the peace and to the magistrates, the governors of the city, accusing them of making trouble and disturbing the peace. Assuming the men were Jews, the magistrate declared them dangerous men and ordered them stripped, beaten, 
and imprisoned in the deepest dungeons, even put in chains. The jailer was commanded to guard them carefully so they could not break out or be rescued. Even in pain after the beating, they were not discouraged. They prayed and sang hymns late into the night, and all the other prisoners were able to hear them and be encouraged. And then an earthquake, big enough to break the chains of the prisoners and throw open all the doors in the jail. At first, when the jailer found the doors open, he was going to kill himself. When he found the prisoners still in jail, he went to Paul and threw himself on the ground trembling, begging for forgiveness for his cruel treatment of them. Now Paul, in his previous life, had been in the position of persecuting good men, of putting people in jail himself. And when the jailer put himself at Paul's mercy, asking, serves, what must I, what must I do to be saved? Paul minister hit, ministered to him and answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Immediately, he took them out of the jail to his home and washed their wounds. Paul instructed them in the teachings of Christ, and then he and his entire family were baptized. The jailer fed them, and they all rejoiced as believers of God. By morning, the magistrates had decided to release Paul and Silas. The jailer brought this news to them and said they were free to go. That's when Paul spoke up and told the officers that he and Silas were Roman citizens whom they had ordered to be beaten and jailed without a trial, which was against the law. Now they were expected to slip out of town? Oh no, Paul could have caused a stir that would have had severe consequences for the magistrates, possibly even loss of their positions. Paul refused to conveniently disappear and demanded that the magistrates publicly address them, make it known that they were released, and escort them away. Paul and Silas returned to Lydia's house and met with those gathered there and prayed with them and encouraged them, and then they left the area. This story of some of the acts of Paul has more violence and trauma than we see in this community, but you can also see that people were cared for and encouraged, some ways like a mother might do. Our first thought of mother is our female parent, but there are other types of mothers. You've probably seen the mother in vinegar that turns alcohol into vinegar. That is a catalyst for change. To mother someone can mean to minister, nurture, affirm, or comfort someone also a catalyst for change. Our lives, even our physical and emotional development, do not develop as they should without this kind of love and care. In today's reading, we have seen all these ways of mothering and also the lack of it. The slave girl's master didn't care that she was delivered from the evil spirit. They only cared that they were losing their income. Even though she shouted into the street, he proclaims to you a way of salvation. They did not open their ears to hear that Paul and Silas could show them the way to be saved. That was a catalyst of change being offered and refused. The magistrates didn't care that they had illegally beaten and imprisoned Roman citizens. They just wanted to sweep it all away, saving themselves potential disgrace and loss of position. These people refused the love that was offered. How often do we keep the door of our hearts locked in fear, afraid to risk judgment, failure, or discovery of our true selves, afraid to step out of our comfort zone? Love is imperfect for humans. We give and receive love with both strength and weakness in different stages of life. Lydia and her household accepted the love that was offered in instructions of baptism and then provided a home base for Paul and Silas to go out from. In that time and place, they experienced God's perfect timing and love. The shocking circumstance of the earthquake and the prisoners not running away, that was a change of direction and a change of life for the jailer and his family. Paul had compassion and empathy and told him what he must do to be saved. The jailer ministered to Paul and Silas, cleaning their wounds, 
providing shelter, comfort, and food. And they rejoiced, experiencing God's perfect love. Each one of us has opportunities to mother those who need help, nurturing and ministering to others in our community. You only have to look in our e-news or our newsletter to see a long list, www providing detergent, toilet paper, and diapers to many people every month, quilters making warm covers for those close to home and those far away, our mission of the month, mom, funded by donations above the regular offerings. We provide homes for single mothers in school at the house next door. Chrysalis House provides assistance for women in transition from incarceration who are homeless, abused, or chemically dependent. At South Junior High, supplies are provided. Fees and activity cards are also provided. During the winter, Mom provides warm clothing, socks, hats, scarves, and gloves for veterans who choose to live on the street. Food is supplied to the food pantry in Eagle. Grace Lutheran in Horseshoe Bend assists the local K through 12 students with critical school supplies and clothing. The local food pantry was started by Grace Lutheran and is supported by members active on the food pantry board. This makes an impact on the struggles of food issues for this small community where 75% of K through 12 students received subsidized meals. It's not just the money donated, but the working hands of the quilters, the volunteers to distribute goods from WWW, those working at food pantries and caring for the needs of families living in poverty. There are women who take holiday gifts of cookies and friendship to those who are homebound and those who are not able to worship in person, letting them know that they are important to us. All these people provide encouragement, comfort, and affirmation to those in our communities. All working with the people who are open to receiving aid, people willing to be mothered. Working from our home bases of Grace and Redeemer, we know the people who have supported our congregations both financially and with volunteer activity. Those who work hard and volunteer many hours to supply online services for us have been a critical asset to our church communities during the time of sheltering in place during COVID. Now that we can freely gather in person, all those who are providing flowers and other decorations in our sanctuary, assisting in worship as communion assistants and ushers, it's time to recognize the importance of providing all those nurturing, affirming, compassionate, and support, supportive actions for the ministries of our congregation. Who can we guide to places of safety when we open our hearts to God's work? I know that Redeemer and Grace are the most welcoming congregations I have known. Without the generous and caring hands of our family and friends at Redeemer and Grace, without seeing others face to face or by Zoom, if we don't carry the love of God out of our worship and share the good news and invite people in, our churches are just buildings. Away from our church families, there are also many people who take love into the world, like the jailer and Lydia. There are always opportunities to nurture, affirm, or offer comfort to others. At the grocery store, at work, or out having fun, we can act differently so the world can see God in us. Something as, sim as simple as a smile or a generous tip may be just what someone else needs at that time. Whether we share a story, give a neighbor a hand, or offer prayer in times of crisis, we can count on God to open hearts to God's message. Like Paul and Silas, we set our sights forward and move along, participating in a life-giving future that grows in love and service. As we open our hearts and ears to God's call, God uses our mothering acts to change lives for the better. Amen. Our sermon hymn is a new one to us, Mothering God, You Gave Me Birth. It's number 735, sing verses 1 through 3.
set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all creation. Holy God, we risk little and suffer even less to serve you. Lord, compared with what your first followers endured, remind us of their sacrifice, dedication, and determination that the gospel would be spread and make us grateful that we are beneficiaries of their witness. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, teach us to use our gifts for good and not for personal gain. Lead us to focus our efforts on behalf of your creation and all those in need. May honesty, integrity, and love prevail over selfishness and insecurity. Risen Lord, Healing God, your resurrection gives hope to all who despair of ever feeling whole again. Strengthen all who are in recovery, those fighting for health, and those who are caring for the chronically ill. Show them what hope looks like in the face of Christ. We pray for those on our prayer list and those we name at this time. Risen Lord, Gather all these and the prayers of this community together into your loving arms through the mercy of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let's share the peace with each other however you feel comfortable. Now we'll receive our offering. Pray with me the offering prayer. We bring gifts before you, O God of resurrection, asking you to bless them and use them to your glory. For even when we cannot see the ending of our efforts, we know that your spirit has the power to enter hearts and transform lives to the farthest corners of the earth. Bless us and use us as your faithful servants, to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. The Lord bless, bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look up on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is Take My Life That I May Be, number 685, verses 1 and 2, 5 and 6.